My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about investing into a Roth IRA. So we're gonna cover the history of a retirement account like a Roth IRA, and we're gonna talk about five things that most people probably didn't know when investing into a Roth IRA. I find that most people are most interested when they're investing in the type of companies or ETFs that they should be investing in. So they're not really looking at the different account types, they're just looking, should I invest into Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, or should I invest into something else? And I think understanding the different tax advantaged or taxable account types is almost equally, if not more important to optimize your investing returns, especially you know with investment account types like a Roth IRA, where they can help you achieve your goal of financial independence much sooner and easier. My channel is all about reaching financial independence through dividend investing. I'm looking to build up a passive stream of income or cash flow that can one day replace my day job. That's what it's all about. And the Roth IRA plays a fundamental role in my path or in my goal of reaching financial independence. So in this video, we're gonna talk all about Roth IRAs, why they're important, the history of them. In next week's video, I'm gonna go into detail about the investments that I hold in my Roth IRA, as well as I'm gonna share my process for how I chose those investments. And I'm gonna share how you can do the same. So what is a Roth IRA? A Roth IRA, in simple terms, is an individual retirement account that allows you to withdraw tax-free distributions in retirement at the age of 59 and a half. So how does a Roth IRA compare to other accounts? So you have your traditional IRA and you have your traditional 401k. That's at the top that you see here. So you get the tax benefit of a traditional IRA or a traditional 401k when you contribute to the account, but you don't get any benefit when you take out the money at 59 and a half. Conversely, with a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k, there's no tax benefit at the beginning but when you take out the distributions and the growth of the portfolio after the age of 59 and a half, you pay zero taxes. I think for most people watching this video, investing into a Roth IRA means you have a long time horizon. Maybe you have 10, 20, or even 30 years before you can access the growth in your account. Investing into retirement accounts like a Roth IRA is a long dedicated process for most people, but it can be very rewarding in the end. For most people investing into a Roth IRA, it will probably look a little like this. So it's not going to be easy. It's going to be really hard. And we're going to have to work at this every day, but I want to do that because I want you. I want all of you forever. You and me every day. <laughs> Will you do something for me? Please, Could you just picture your life for me. 30 years from now, 40 years from now, what's it look like? I asked for Mai Tai and they brought me a pina colada. And I said, no salt, no salt for the margarita, but it had salt on it. I think the of salt on Los Cientos, my family, again, I won't be leaving a tip. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So to understand why this account is so important, I think it's important to understand where we were before and how we got here. So before retirement accounts like Roth IRAs or 401ks, most people depended on social security or their pension from their job to pay for their retirement. A person would get a pension from their job who, you know, when, when they were part of a labor union. I think it's important to understand your history when looking at this. When you say, you know, labor union today or pension, I think most people will look at you and say, okay, boomer. All right. Okay. The reality is that today there's not a lot of unions around in the private sector. In fact, if we look here about, you know, 2019, there was just over, you know, 6% of the total workforce were part of labor unions. And if you compare that back to the, uh, you know, the fifties right here, it was just over a third. So one in every three people here in the United States was part of a labor union. And some of the benefits of the, of a labor union was you didn't have to worry about your retirement, your pension. When you retired at the age of 65 or, or whenever it may be, you knew that you had money coming in and you didn't have to worry about necessarily funding your own retirement. It was all done through your job. If you fast forward today with there being roughly 6% of the total US workforce part of a labor union, we really have a crisis on our hand when it comes to our retirement. Now you could say, well, Jake, I don't have to worry about it because I'll have social security. 
Well, unless you've been living under a rock, I don't think Social Security is necessarily going to be there in the capacity that it is today. It's very possible that the government has to raise taxes, increase inflation by printing more money to be able to fund Social Security for everybody. So instead of relying on a union or Social Security, we as a society here in the United States have shifted more towards an individual retirement account approach. And with the rapid decrease in labor unions, this is really where the 401k comes into play. So if we look at the 401k, the 401k has not been around forever. It really started here in the late 1970s, and it wasn't until the early 1980s where we really started to see an uptick in the amount of companies here in the United States adopting and starting to issue 401ks for their employees with just nearly half of all large firms here in the United States either offering a 401k plan or considering one. And if we go back to this chart, we can see in the private sector union membership rates here in the 1980s where they really started to drop off. And that's where you see this adoption of 401k plans in the private sector here in the United States. Now, the first thing that you probably didn't know about a Roth IRA is your Roth IRA can actually act as an emergency fund. Now, the difference between a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA is the traditional IRA, you can never tap into the contributions because you've already received the tax benefit up front. Now, with a Roth IRA, you don't receive those tax benefits until later on after you've reached the age of 59 and a half. Because you can always pull out your contributions tax and penalty free, your Roth IRA can actually act as, as a piggy bank or an emergency fund. Now, I personally would always use that as a last resort, but it is absolutely available if you need it. Another thing to note here on this point is you can actually tap into your Roth IRA for more things than you may be aware of. So a lot of people will say, well, I, can't, I don't want to invest into a Roth IRA because my money is stuck in the account forever and I can never get it out. Well, that's true for the most part, but there are some loopholes, if you want to call them so, to get your money out. So for example, there's two things that you have to be aware of. With a Roth IRA, you have to have the money in the account for at least five years. If you've owned your Roth IRA for less than five years, you generally will owe taxes and a 10% penalty if you withdraw the earnings from your account before the age of 59. Now, there are a few exceptions to this rule. For example, you can borrow or loan against your, your IRA up to $10,000 to buy your first home. And this is a once in a lifetime thing. You can't do this multiple times. You can't do it every couple of years. It's one and done. And really, you want to make sure that this is the right choice for you. I don't recommend just going and, and borrowing against your, your IRA um, because there's a lot of things, you know, you have to you know do a pros and cons list when it comes to that and the opportunity costs with that. But there are definitely things that, you know, exceptions to the rule of what we're talking about here. And if you've owned the Roth IRA, for five years or more, you can avoid the taxes and the penalties of the early withdrawal completely if you meet one of these exceptions. So there are exceptions to the rule of never being able to withdraw before 59 and a half. The second thing you may not have known about a Roth IRA is not everyone can invest into a Roth IRA. It really depends on your income level. So for example, if you're married and following jointly, if you make over $208,000 a year, you're not actually eligible to contribute the traditional way to a Roth IRA. So after 198, it starts to phase out and you can contribute less and less. But after 208, you cannot invest into a Roth IRA. And if you're single, the exact same thing, if you make over $140,000 in a calendar year, you're not able to contribute to a Roth IRA. But there's one huge caveat here. There's something called the backdoor Roth IRA. So if you are married and you make over $208,000, you actually still can contribute to a Roth IRA. Welcome to the US tax system. It's kind of funky, but essentially this is what is called the backdoor Roth IRA. This is a legal way of breaking this, this rule, if you want to call it a rule, when it comes to investing into a Roth IRA, if you make too much money according to the tax rules today. So with the backdoor Roth IRA, all it is essentially is you're contributing the money to a traditional IRA, and then what you're doing is you're converting it to a Roth IRA. So there you go. That is how you contribute to a Roth IRA if you make over the modified adjusted gross income limit for the calendar year. The third thing that you probably didn't know about a Roth IRA is if you're over the age of 50, you can play catch up and you can invest an additional $1,000 a year in your account. 
in addition to being able to play catch up if you're over the age of 50, is you also don't have what is called the required minimum distributions. With a Roth IRA, you can let the money sit into your account and you're not required to withdraw a minimum amount each year. This is very different than other accounts like a 401k. So really a huge benefit, especially if you plan on passing along your portfolio or your, your investments to your family. This is a huge benefit over other retirement accounts. The fourth thing that you probably didn't know about a Roth IRA is you can roll over and convert into a Roth IRA from a different account. So a rollover is a like kind rollover. So for example, if you have a Roth 401k, you would then roll over into a Roth IRA. That's what's called a rollover. If you're going to do a conversion, let's say for example, you have a traditional IRA or a traditional 401k, that is what is called a conversion. You're converting that account, that traditional account, into a Roth IRA. Now let me give you a very practical example of something that you should really be aware of. Let's say for example, you work at your company and you contribute to a Roth 401k. Let's say you contribute 3% of your pay and your employer matches that 3%. Let's say you're there for four years and you've contributed every single year. And then you leave that employer, you go to a new company and you start a new plan, a new 401k plan with a new employer. In this case, let's say you wanna roll over your Roth 401k into your Roth IRA in your, your brokerage. One thing that you have to be aware of is the contributions that you contributed into the, the Roth 401k will not be taxed, but all of your employer's contributions will be taxable. So if you're converting that, let's say for example, you, you, know, you contributed $10,000 and your employer contributed $10,000. If you do the conversion in that calendar year, you will be paying upfront the taxes to convert your employer's contributions into your Roth IRA. So it's very, very important that you understand that if you're in a high tax bracket and you're gonna convert it, maybe it would make sense to then convert it at a different year, in a different year where you're not paying or when you're maybe not in such a high tax bracket. So be very, very you know aware of that. Even if you were contributing to a Roth IRA, your employer is contributing on a ta you know, in a traditional manner. So you're paying taxes on your employer's contributions if you're converting it to a Roth IRA. The other example would be if you had a traditional 401k, then yes, you would be paying both your contributions and your employer's contributions. You'd be paying the taxes upfront if you convert a traditional account into a Roth account. Very, very important. You wanna make sure that you're not in a high tax bracket that year if you can help it. Now, the fifth thing that you probably didn't know about what you could do with your Roth IRA is what is called the Roth IRA conversion ladder. The Roth IRA conversion ladder is very well known in the fire community, financial independence, retire early. It really is more so what, what individuals do who are pursuing FIRE via the 4% rule. So dividend investing or dividend investors, I don't necessarily know if this would really be the, the approach for most, though I think it could make sense if you know if you do it right and if you plan it right. With the Roth IRA conversion ladder, you're creating a series of tax-free and penalty-free withdrawals from your retirement accounts. And this is done by taking your traditional IRA and converting it into your Roth IRA. Now there's a lot of planning that comes into this because when you do the conversion, you're not able to touch the contributions or the conversion for at least five years. And so by creating this ladder, by doing this every single year, you're planning five years in advance. So for example, in 2018, if you were to convert $50,000, you would be able to pull out those $50,000 tax and penalty free in five years, so in 2023. And essentially what you're doing here is you're creating a ladder every single year, you're taking out 50,000, 75,000, $100,000. So it's really about understanding what your anticipated expenses will be in five years. Now, the key thing with this is you really have to understand when you're doing that conversion, you're paying the taxes up front. So you wanna make sure that you're doing the conversion in a calendar year where you're not gonna be subject to a really high tax bracket. And the great thing about this is that $50,000 that you converted it has probably grown over those last five years and all of the earnings or the growth is still growing in your portfolio. You're only taking out what you've contributed or what you converted. I think the Roth IRA conversion ladder can be really a great 
great tool for those that really want to engineer and really want to get into the nitty gritty of retiring early. But I do want to say it's not for everyone. I believe the more that you understand and learn about these different retirement accounts, the more informed you're going to be to be able to make the right decisions for you for your particular situation. I hope that this video was helpful and that you learned something new. In next week's video, I'm going to share my entire Roth IRA portfolio and share the methodology that I used to come up what investments should be in my Roth IRA for my particular time horizon. Thank you so much for watching everybody and I'll catch everybody in next week's video. You know what? I think we're going to be friends. Can everyone say hi to my friend? That's crazy. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner. <laughs>